Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Traveling Chuck. In this video, we're going to go off in a little bit different direction by showing you how to make one of our favorite dishes. It's a stuffed meatloaf wrapped in bacon cooked on the smoker. So if you love hamburger, bacon, cheese, and maybe even a touch of Jack Daniels, trust me, you're going to love this recipe. And with that being said, let's get cooking. The first thing we want to do is get our grill preheated to 225 degrees. Today I will be using my pellet grill with a combination of fruit wood pellets. Next we'll go over our ingredients. We'll start off with two pounds of hamburger meat that is an 80-20 mix, two cloves of minced garlic. The next ingredient will be two large eggs slightly beaten. Next, we will add one tablespoon of Worcester sauce and two tablespoons of Jack Daniels whiskey, one half cup of breadcrumbs, and one tablespoon of your favorite steak rub, one medium red onion grated, one quarter cup milk. Now that we've got all the ingredients added into the meat, with the exception of your cheese and bacon, we can go ahead and start mixing the ingredients together. You don't really want to overwork the meat because if you do, when you cook it, it'll be tough and chewy. Now that we have all the ingredients mixed into the hamburger meat, let's divide it into two equal portions. They should be roughly about a pound a piece. And take one of the portions, place it on the pan, which is going into the smoker and start forming the hamburger into the shape of a loaf. Now, depending on which kind of cheese you use, we use the sliced, extra large sliced cheese. You want to make sure that your loaf is large enough to where you can spread out the cheese fairly evenly. The type of cheese you use is totally up to you. We happen to really like pepper jack cheese, and so we'll get eight ounces of pepper jack slices. You can use the blocks, you can also uh, get the string cheese and use that instead if you happen to have that on enough of that on hand instead of having to buy some extra but just as long as your loaf is large enough to accommodate the type of cheese that you're using and you want to try to make your cheese layer as even as possible but it doesn't have to be exact once you've used all the cheese, go ahead and get that second half of the meatloaf mixture, place it on top, and start forming it into a loaf. You want to spread it out to where it's even with the bottom half, and then I normally go around and seal the sides to help keep the cheese from melting out of the loaf. You also want to make sure that the meatloaf is the same thickness all the way around, or at least real close. This way you don't get one area that is done and another area that is not. Alright, at this point we can go ahead and start adding the bacon. The bacon is pretty much up to you as to what flavor you want. I like to use maple flavor, sometimes applewood flavored bacon. You can also do a basket weave if you like. I choose not to do that because I'm not real talented when it comes to basket weaves. I also prefer to use the thin sliced bacon. The last time that we did this with thick sliced bacon, it did not seem to turn out as well. With the thin sliced bacon, you don't need to use as much. You only need about a pound, whereas with the thick sliced bacon, you'll need a package and a half to cover the meatloaf. All right, let's make the glaze. The glaze consists of only a few ingredients, as you can see here. The first ingredient is one half cup of ketchup, one third cup of brown sugar, one tablespoon of your favorite steak rub, and two tablespoons of crushed red peppers. The final ingredient is one quarter cup of Jack Daniels whiskey. Let's go ahead and combine everything into a small bowl. 
and once everything's there you can go ahead and use a whisk a fork will work just as well but I like to use a whisk once everything's blended together we'll go ahead and take the glaze and pour it over the entire meatloaf there's really no trick to this you just want to make sure that you cover the entire meatloaf with the glaze when applying the glaze you just want to try to get it even as possible and again making sure that all parts of the bacon are covered so you don't have burnt sections once you're satisfied that the meatloaf is completely covered in the glaze we can go ahead and take it on out to the grill and get it cooking once we place the meatloaf on the grill the next thing we'll do is place a meat probe into the meatloaf so we can monitor the internal temperature we're going to be looking for an internal temperature of 165 degrees so it's been about an hour and a half the internal temperature is about 122 so let's look, open up the grill and see what it looks like. Oh, wow, does that look good. Can hardly wait till it finishes. Let's close it up and we'll be back when it's ready. Okay, so it's reached 165 degrees internal temperature. So the first thing we need to do is to remove the meat thermometer and then we can remove it from the grill and take it inside. And this thing has turned out really good. I can't hardly wait to try it. Now that we have it inside and off the grill, we're gonna go ahead and let it rest for about, oh, 15 minutes, and then we'll cut into it. All right, now that it's rested about 15 minutes, let's cut into it and see what it looks like. Okay, we'll cut us off a small piece right here in the end so we can get a good look at the filling. And there we go. Look at all that cheese. Now you don't have to let it rest for 15 minutes, but if you don't, when you go to cut into it, all that cheese will just come running out and then you'll have a big mess on your hands. Let's try, the, try a small piece right here to see what it tastes like. As you can tell from my expression, it is really good. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. And if you would, hit the like button and leave a comment below. And if you haven't, hit the subscribe button as well to see more videos like this. Until next time, so long from Traveling Chuck.